the city of Dallas. And we are underway. Washington State in the dark. SMU in the home white. This is Michael Flowers, number 12, who will handle the point for Washington State. Needs only five threes, by the way, to tie the great Clay Thompson for the all-time three-point record in a season. This SMU team is really good, especially on the perimeter defending. They go inside to Gay. And Gay misses the easy one. And then a foul committed by SMU. So they went inside right away to Mohamed Gay, the big 6'11 center. And that might be the strategy because they are much bigger than SMU. SMU doesn't start a guy more than 6'5". They really are. And they have Michael Weathers on him, which shows you Michael Weathers' versatility. Flowers underneath, and the Cougars are the first on the board. So SMU will start Kendrick Davis, the player of the year, Emmanuel Bandamel, the Canadian, Zach Nuttall, and the twins, Michael and Marcus. Michael, seven minutes older, three inches shorter. That's Marcus Weathers. Way off the mark. It's important for Marcus to be able to knock down those type of shots to bring the big guys away from the basket. Flowers with his second shot. No good. The first two possessions have been a bad sign for SMU. They have not come up with defensive rebounds. They have to keep watching the state off the offensive glass. F.A. Abergidi, arguably the best athlete on this court, number zero for Washington State. As Roberts pulls up in and out. And here comes Davis, the American player of the year. They have Gay on Nuttall, which is an interesting matchup. Weathers took some steps and a travel call by Brad Ferry, our refereeing crew, Brad Ferry, Tommy Nunez, and Owen Short. Good refereeing crew tonight here, Coach. They really are. Dave, these matchups are real interesting to me, uh, how they're matching up with the bigs, with, with Michael Weathers on game. Flowers, jump hook, no good. Tipping, somehow Gay missed it. And Gay does a nice job of running the floor and gets the steal. Now F.A. Abagidi waits for Gay to get back in the front court. T.J. Bomba's first three of the game is good. And the Cougars are up 5-0. Bomba is really important to the Cougars. He is their best defensive player and his offense has really picked up as the season has progressed. Michael Weathers with the runner, and that's good. SMU's on the board. It's important for SMU to get it done on the defensive end, though. Inside to Abogidi. And a travel called on Abergini, who was trying to post up the smaller weathers. Dave, sometimes it takes teams a minute to kind of get settled in. I think that SMU is trying to settle. That's Michael Weathers on that drive, and hopefully that will get him more settled in defensively because he's given up two offensive rebounds already. Davis in trouble, throws it away, and here comes Washington State. Bamba over to Gay. Gay's had three shots go in and out, and finally one goes down for him. But again, the dominance of Washington State on the offensive glass. These are two contrasting styles with SMU being smaller, Washington State being bigger. So far, Washington State is winning. Davis is on the board, 7-4. Now, Dave, he's the neutralizer. If he gets going, he can neutralize a lot of things, Davis. Gay tells Roberts to clear out. Roberts, tough shot. Abogidi knocked it around, and SMU will get the basketball. F.A. and Gay have been the focal point so far 
for Washington State. That's the strategy to go in on the big man. But just as we say that, Coach, SMU goes to their bench and they bring in Franklin Aganene, who's a big body. Yeah, Aganene is really big. What they did, they took out Nuttall, one of their perimeter short scores, to get better matchups. Aganene is 6'9, 245. Marcus Weathers. No hoop, they'll count, the, they'll call the foul. Off. So now, Coach SMU is trying to go a little big to counter the bigs of Washington State. Yeah, so far SMU's been the first team to flinch as far as changing the way that they normally play. Davis now, bump, no call, and shot doesn't go. Yakimovsky's 23, he's in for the Cougars. 21's Deshaun Jackson, a big body, in for the Cougars. And a travel called by Tommy Nunez and the turnover. I tell you, this SMU team is really good with this perimeter defending. And their ability to keep Roberts and Flowers out of the paint is going to be critical for their success. Bandamel, pump fake, and the Canadian is too strong, and then a foul underneath is going to be called on number 33, Franklin Agunani, for pushing. When Bandamel and Nuttall are knocking down threes, that's when SMU is very lethal, because normally Weathers and Davis can penetrate and create their own, but when those two guys really knock down jump shots, it really spreads the defense. Flowers almost didn't get the ball over the half court line. Defense. Defense. SMU with the tough defense right here. And Washington State and our offensive foul on Flowers who just looked frustrated. I tell you, I, I, SMU is really good with their perimeter defending. And it's going to be a challenge for Roberts and Flowers to be able to penetrate. There you see. Right now, he has the ball. Vanderbilt just gets up on it, moves his feet extremely well. He just got frustrated and pushed off. Good call. Davis against Roberts, two of the better little guards in the country. And Jackson cleans it up for the Cougars off the glass. This is Noah Williams, 24, who's checked in. His float is short. Marcus Weathers going right at the defenders. No good. Loose ball on the floor, tied up, jump ball, and possession will go to SMU. SMU is trying to challenge the size of Washington State. So far, they have not been successful with it. Let's see if they can make some adjustments to it as the game goes on. There you see Marcus Weathers challenging the sides right there, scrambled on the floor, and we wound up with a jump. Phelps is in the game now. He really played extremely well against Nichols. Ball will stay out of bounds to SMU. Phelps gives uh, Michael Weathers a break, and Phelps gives him a, a, a physical perimeter player and somebody that can help him on the glass also. Oh, only a freshman coach, the Texas Player of the Year out of Midland, Texas. Davis with a nice pump fake, frees himself up, and the shot won't go. Right now, uh, Washington State is making Davis have to work, and he, I think he's working a little too hard right now. Normally, they like him just coming off of ball screens and a weak side action. And surprising, Coach, almost seven minutes in, SMU only has two hoops. Jackson knocks down the 15-footer, and it is 9-4 Washington State. It is obvious right now Washington State is trying to go inside and use their size.
Phelps kicks it back out to Bandemil. Shot clock down to five. Bandemil. Tough interior pass. Good defense by Washington State. Noah Williams ahead of everybody. Waits. Waits too long he and he traveled. I think he walked. Noah Williams is one of, was one of the most improved players in the Pac-12 this year. Williams had 72 points, Dave, in one weekend. He had 32 against Cal and 40 against Stanford. His dad was a great player, Guy Williams, at Washington State. They get a lot of legacies there in Washington State. <laughs> His dad played with the great Craig Elo, who's doing radio broadcast right now for the Cougars radio. Bandamil is being held by Yakimovsky in a foul. I'm not sure SMU is going to have success just trying to beat Washington State off the dribble. I think because of their size, they thought maybe they had an advantage. SMU just trying to isolate and dribble penetration. But as you see there, they're not really getting by guys. And then a bad pass off the inbounds. Nice steal by Noah Williams. And Noah with the left, no good. Yakimovsky hustling. Yakimovsky throws it in with the left. 11-4, Cougs. Yak is awful strong, and he, again, stepping in. He's a really good offensive player. Played a lot overseas before he came to Washington State. Now Marcus Weathers, a lot of contact with him and Gay. Gay stays on his feet, and then Gay is called for a foul. A legend. Well, Craig Eagle also played with Mark Price, who we coached at Georgia Tech, and he thinks the world of him and his leadership. Is Washington State playing great defense, or is this just a terrible start by SMU, Coach? Well, I, they're playing really good defense, and I think SMU is trying to adapt to the size of Washington State. So far, only two field goals and a free throw for the Mustangs. Bamba thought about it. Now goes on the floor. T.J. Bamba too strong. And the ball goes out of bounds to SMU. I don't think SMU's come up with a clean defensive rebound in traffic yet. And that has to clean up. They have to put bodies on people. And right now, they've gone even smaller. There you see, again, you see the size of Washington State creating havoc on the offensive glass. Davis has been kind of quiet so far. Weathers, tough shot. Flowers has always been a really good score from Detroit. Was that Western Michigan, South Alabama before getting to Washington State? Both free throws good. Now a four point game. Washington State's gone a little smaller with Rodman. Coming in now, playing some of the fourth spot. Yeah, the son of the Hall of Famer DJ Robin, and they corrected the score. It's now 13 7. So a six point deficit as Williams drives all the way to the foul a lane and gets fouled. So Noah Williams will go to the free throw line and shoot two. Dave, I've been impressed with the ball handling skills of this Washington State team. They're a young ball club. You know, we heard a lot about the bigs coming in and obviously Flowers and Roberts. But the other guys, Williams putting the ball on the floor, Bomba being able to put the ball on the floor. There you see uh, Williams with a great drive there using his ball handling skills. Kyle Smith in his third year was a great coach at USF, coach at Columbia, longtime assistant at St. Mary's. Played at Hamilton College, Division III coach in the NESCAC in New York. Uh, and just uh, one of the good guys in coaching.
without question. He's a basketball junkie. He would go coach and work at clinics all over the country. Swatted by Abogini. That's the problem for SMU on, on their drive. Washington State has guys that can erase a lot of the drive. Bamba no good and a foul on SMU as Rodman, who plays a lot like his dad, sort of always crashing the offensive board, got fouled. Watch this block from the weak side. Effie comes over and he does a great job. That's what he's known for in the Pac-12. Bamba no good, but Abogini dunks it home. They have to put bodies on the bigs. And unfortunately, uh, they've got the young kid J Jackson in the game. And he has not had a lot of playing time for SMU, but he's got to come in and he's got to put bodies on the big to keep Washington State off the glass. Abogidi, one of the quickest jumpers you'll ever see. It's like a pogo stick watching him go up and down. Not all too strong. Roberts runs it down. DJ Rodman lost it, got it back. Abogini for three. Oh my goodness, what an athlete he is. I know one of the people in the back Pac-12 have been raving about him. He didn't, he wound up getting hurt early and uh, for the Big 12 uh, uh, tournament. Eight nothing run in the last 145. And finally, a much-needed hoop for the Mustangs. Ten-point spread, 19-9, as we close in on the nine-minute mark. F.A.'s calling for it right now. And they're isolating and trying to let him go one and one. Weathers gets the rebound. Weathers all the way with a nice Euro step, missed it. Rodman with the rebound. Here comes Bamba. Bamba fouled and shot does not go, but TJ Bamba will go to the free throw line and shoot two. So, Coach, you said it was important for Kendrick Davis to have a good game. Yes, indeed, but he needs to continue to knock down these shots. And they've got him on clear outs and isolation, but they're really making him work for everything he can get right now. Again, I'm just really impressed with Washington State's defense and their size. Their size on the perimeter, they're all about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and they're really challenging the perimeter shooting of SMU. They've got to find some way to try to neutralize that. Davis has four. He averages 19. Once again, the American Player of the Year in the American Athletic Conference. 21-9 Washington State, the four-seed Cougars, the tie for 15 out of the Pac-12. This is SMU's best offensive lineup right now that's in the game. And Davis heard what you said, Coach, trying to get some offense going. Well, what they're doing now is spreading them out and because they have shooters with Nuttall back in the game. Roberts all the way, unabated. That's not like SMU's defense right now. The perimeter guys are not containing Washington State on the perimeter. Kick ball and SMU will keep it. Big man Deshaun Jackson comes back in. F.A. Albagidi gets a rest. But they, they just keep replacing one big after <laughs> another. So it's really no relief. I mean, Deshaun Jackson looks like a grown man. That is a, that is a big athletic looking kid. He really is. Jackson with the rebound. Bamba up ahead. Bamba, nice oh. spin and finish with the left. I tell you what, Bamba's from New York City. You can see he's got some of those New York listed at 6'5", and he looks tiny standing <laughs> next to Deshaun Jackson. Without question. I think they've got to screen him more. I think they've got to run him off with some uh, basketball action, which is ball screens, cross screens. Offensive foul. 
called on Weathers setting the screen. When that stuff happens, that's normally on the guard because the guard is coming off the screen before the big can really be set. Now he should take his time. He's not. He's still moving. Uh, well, Davis has to wait a little bit and let him get set. Nice rebound by Nuttall. Washington State will be in the bonus, by the way, on the next foul by SMU. Nuttall left alone in the corner. And a much-needed hoop by Zach Nuttall for the Mustang. Coach Jank is, has counted down by putting in a really good perimeter shooting team and tried now to make Washington State adjust to him a little bit defensively. Jackson trying to post up. They don't get him. Instead, Roberts drives the lane, hangs. No good. Jackson with the offensive board. Jackson no good. Yakimovsky going for it, and Davis comes down with it for SMU. And Davis pulls for a long three. No good, and the ball will go back to Washington State. One of the things SMU has to do when the ball is shot at the rim, they've got to find somebody and put a body on them because the Washington State guys are just coming over the back and everybody's attacking. And this SMU knows how to do this because they beat Houston here, which is one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. Coach, you've seen the Mustangs play a lot this year. Does, do they seem maybe a little flat because of maybe this not being the NCAA tournament, or do you think that's not the issue? I don't think that. i, I got to give Washington State a lot of credit. I don't think that right now, I think they're a little bit overwhelmed with the size and not a, adapting to it very well. Yakimovsky with the runner. No good. Jackson battling. Rodman with an offensive rebound. Noah Williams off. Another offensive rebound. Jackson again. This time he makes it. That time, Marcus Weathers, who I love, didn't even jump, you know? And so I think they can't get in, give in to the size of Washington State. Emmanuel bandamel has been quiet and finally makes it down the lane and a crack through the defense. That time, that worked because of the spacing that was created by the fact that they had four shooters on the floor. It's not Washington State initial shot that's hurting SMU. It's their ability to offensive rebound. Another foul on the floor, and now Washington State is in the bonus, and they'll go to the free throw line. There you see Vandermeer right there. He's driving. Hopefully that picks up his confidence because he is a very talented offensive player and that time he was able to get beat his guy and see the rim clean without seeing a defender in front of him. Coach you mentioned the glass Washington State's winning 21 to 9 and they have 10 offensive rebounds. That's the game right there. You know SMU is doing a good job of the initial defending but they have to do a better job and now they're bringing in Clark. And this young man transferred in from Baylor, and that hopefully will give them more size to help on the glass. Tristan Clark was a great player at Baylor, had a bad injury, spent a year away from hoops, retired, and then found another home here. And Coach Jankovic said when he played at Baylor, he was tremendous, but he had a serious knee injury. And, and they have been... This young man has been really an emotional leader for this SMU team, has come in in some critical situations and picked them up. They're hopeful he can do it again today. Not all. No good. And there's no offensive rebounding at all for SMU. Well, when you space the floor like that, your guys are not underneath two offensive rebounds, so they have to make more of an effort to go crash the glass from distance. Deshaun Jackson. Got solo. He just tried to rise up and dunk. He got blocked by the rim. He coach. just played bully ball on that one. 
You know, normally the officials give you, they give you one bump, all right? But watch this when Jackson comes off. The one bump, another bump. He just bumped him all the way underneath, <laughs> and he missed. He was so close, he didn't recognize where he was. Out of bounds. It'll stay with SMU. Now, Marcus Weathers is starting to get a little frustrated because he can't dominate inside like he normally does, and he hasn't been able to blow by the Washington State defenders that are guarding him. He is a very important part of SMU's offensive philosophy. Kickball will stay with SMU. Thirteen point spread in favor of the four seed Cougars. Winner has a date with BYU. SMU wins. The game's here. Washington State wins. The game's in Provo, Utah. Weathers up and getting getting them playing for each other. Marcus Weathers was second team American Conference. Had the double double versus Nichols State. Was not recruited. By Jankovic originally, he wanted his brother Michael, didn't want Marcus. Now they're both here, and Jankovic said, I hope he's not mad at me because he's a lot <laughs> he's a lot stronger now. <laughs> uh, and I tell you what, he's given SMU a tremendous energy level. And they've got to find a way to handle this size right now, Washington State. And it's a lot of game to be played. Flowers for three. Got it. Uh, Michael Flowers with a long, long three, his first. And now he is four behind the all-time leader, Clay Thompson, for single-season threes. I tell you what, that was a heat check right there because that was long range. And Brandon Mill, who is probably SMU's best defensive player, was Gardner. He's got 94 this season. Clay had 98 back in 2011. Jumper is short by Clark. That's the action that SMU needs to do, but they've got to pass it to one of their better shooters. Williams pulls it back out. Look for a high ball screen right there. Williams trapped. Finds Abogidi for a long three, too strong. And good hustle by Noah Williams. Ball goes out of bounds. Flowers' range is incredible, Dave. I mean, his ability to spread the defense like that just opened up driving lanes for some of the other players. I mean, that's a long closeout. Most guys do not think somebody would shoot the ball from that far out. Bandemil switches to the left. No good. Jackson clears it. But that's a perfect example of how the size, he didn't even hit the rim. He changed the shot enough with the size, trying to get over the arm of Jackson that it was just an ineffective drive. Flowers again, feeling it. Two in a row for Michael Flowers, closing in on Clay Thompson. I tell you what, I, you can see in the SMU guys' faces that they're getting a little dejected. Not only are they not able to get good shots, but their vaunted, their, their, their vaunted defense, which they've hung their hat on, is not able to stop Washington State's perimeter shooting. Flowers was a two. I looked like a three. It was a two. I gave him one extra point, Coach. <laughs> Clay Thompson says, not so fast. He's not that close to my record. <laughs> Roberts, that is a three. Abogidi, nice offensive rebound. Flowers oh, again. That one was They need a, three. a timeout. <laughs> they need a timeout. They need a timeout. As an old coach, I recognize when we need one, and they <laughs> Flower, really need Flower one. Flowers said, listen, that last one might not have been a three. This is a three. We'll take a 32. Back in a minute. Michael Flowers, coach, he's now got 95. He only needs three more to tie the great clay. Yeah, you don't need a lot of analyzation on that. He just is <laughs> catching and shooting. It doesn't matter where he is or who's on it. 19 point lead, the biggest of the game for the Cougs. Closing in on one minute left in the first half. 
and, and the Cougs have gone to a 2-3 zone. And inside, Clark for SMU. I, sometimes coaches can outcoach themselves. I think Coach Cal that time went with the zone when the man-to-man -man has been working so well. He just wanted to give SMU a different look. Look for the high ball screen. Look for F.A. to roll. Rodman, nice pump fake, wide open, too strong. Ball punched out to Roberts, goes back to Williams. Another offensive tip drill for Washington State. The key to this game has been very simple. Washington State's dominating the offensive glass, their offensive glass. Four on the shot clock, Williams has to shoot it, draws the foul and gets Michael Weathers in the air, so Noah Williams will shoot two, and they needed that because there was only two left on the shot clock. Yeah, but one of the things Washington State is doing to SMU that a lot of other teams have not been able to do, normally when you drive the ball against SMU, you meet a secondary defender in the lane. But because of Washington State's ability to crash the glass, guys are trying to lock in close to their guys so they don't beat them on the offensive glass, and you don't get that secondary defender. So that primary defender is isolated one-on-one. -on -one. 12 offensive rebounds for Washington State. That is a game changer right there. Uh, because not only does it affect the score, but it takes the heart out of your team. And I'm surprised because SMU did very well against Houston, which is one of the nation's best offensive rebounding teams. Final seconds, Davis for three. Too strong. Rodman gets the rebound. He'll have to heave it up. He does. And no good. A dump. Job on Davis to eliminate a lot of SMU scoring. SMU one of seven from three for 14%, only 32% from the field. And, of course, the big stat, which Coach hit on 12 offensive rebounds for the Cougars. Gay's first shot of the second half, no good, and the ball goes to SMU. SMU has to become more physical, much more aggressive, especially to start the second half. You know, Dave, energy solved a lot of problems. And if they come out with more energy, I think a lot of things will start to fall in line. Marcus Weathers for three. And maybe that'll get the big man on track. Hopefully that will get him going because he's been playing a little frustrated in the first half. Only the second three of the game for SMU. Roberts for three. And Tyrell Roberts can knock it down. That was not what SMU was trying to do. Davis has to do a better job picking him up and guarding him off the ball. Michael Weathers swatted by Abogidi. Dave, that's my committee at the rim. It's not <laughs> just one of them. You get half the team. <laughs> Marcus Weathers again for a second three. This one in and out and gaze above everybody for the rebound. The size and athleticism and how hard this Washington State bigs play. Roberts too strong was feeling it with the heat check. Michael Weathers got as low as he could and then just went right over Flowers. And then the steal. Nuttall got the steal, got the ball back. Weathers thought about it, thought better, gave it to Davis. Now Weathers inside, blocked by Abogidi. The size has neutralized Weathers at the rim. Abogidi running out of control. Corner open for Bandamel, no good. The shot blockers of Washington State just make a huge difference. They really do. Because not only if they don't block it, they change your shot. 
And, and they also have gotten in SMU's heads when they drive where they're looking at them instead of looking at the rim. Flowers for three. No good. Ball bouncing around. Nuttall comes down with it. Vandemel. Vandemel strong and draws the foul on Flowers who disagrees. But the size advantage has just been so much in favor of Washington State. It really has. There you see Weathers, Michael Weathers driving. He gets it blocked. And again, that was a great aggressive move. And what happens, there you see Marcus Weathers is driving. And again, it's blocked right there. Uh, it's, it's hard mentally when that, you get that picture in your mind of the rim being protected. And uh, what are you going to try to do to overcome it? And they replaced one big with another with Jackson coming in. First round NIT, Abogidi, Gay, and Jackson were all huge in points, rebounds, steals, and blocks. <laughs> I mean, I talk about a wall in the Palouse uh -huh. in Pullman, Washington. That was a big wall. And they play so hard, and they seem to enjoy what their roles are. Crowd trying to get into it, Perry, to give them something to cheer for. Oh, they are. This team has come out ready to root on their SMU Mustangs. If they could just bury a couple threes back to back, this place would explode. And now a foul away from the ball. Students have been on spring break. They're just coming back. So some of them made it back. Some didn't. When Obviously, I, this has been a great home court advantage, Coach, 17-0. Oh, without question. Now, I will tell you something. When I was a coach and I was up, like Washington State's up, I was the most nervous then because now any comeback, it was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so I was always really concerned when we got a big lead, especially early because there's a lot of basketball to be played. Weather's too far underneath. The ball gets stuck. That is a jump ball, and possession will go to SMU. I think Marcus has to stop worrying about contact and trying to draw a foul. I think he has to figure it's not going to be a foul call, keep his eye on the rim, and just finish. Now Marcus for three. Bamba with the rebound. Beautiful oh. spinning reverse by Ty Roberts. That time they did a side ball screen, and he refused the ball screen and went baseline, and it was an empty side drive, and he got the, all the way to the rim. Roberts has nine. Weather's no good. Rodman another rebound. Too low, too inside, and too big for Washington State for Jackson. Without question. Jackson loves to play in that low post. He's one of the more physical players on the Washington State team, and they're really getting him the ball where he can operate. Kendrick Davis slices through the traffic. Washington State does a great job of executing their half-court offense. And they're coming down, and they're, actually, they're running stuff to t take some time off the clock and get the ball where they want it. Now Jackson against Weathers gets help from Bandamel, and left all alone and cutting nicely was Noah Williams. I'm not sure if that was a set double team, but Jackson, keeping his head up, took advantage of the guy that was open. Washington State was able to get a layup. The lead is 19 for Washington State. lineup anticipating SMU trying to shoot more threes Davis has two more he got Tyrell Roberts into the air before we went to the media timeout and so three free free throws for Kendrick Davis who's an 86 percent free throw shooter and scores 19 points a game and right now has 11.
SMU coming with some pressure right now, trying to get more of an up-tempo. SMU understands this is a very critical part of the game. They've got to start really cutting into this lead. Now Jackson against Clark, and Jackson too big and a nice touch. The spacing that Washington State has does not allow SMU to double once the ball goes into the post. Davis pump fake cleared and knocks down a three. Davis with 14 now, Coach. That's the response that SMU fans are waiting for. And this crowd is starting to pick up a little bit. Roberts, no good. Jackson on the floor. Clark on the floor. Mustangs come away with it. Michael Weathers spinning through. For Washington State on their run. We'll see if there's a momentum shift one way or the other after Jackson leaves the court. Here's the steal by Michael Weathers. Michael Weathers with the floater. Says, I feel fine, man. Put me back in the game. <laughs> Having a great game, too. Eight points and eight boards. Yeah. Now Yakubovsky, who knows how to handle the, the rock. He actually was a point guard for the Macedonian junior team. So even though he's a big here, he can handle it. Williams, no. Weathers all the way. Stops. Nuttall's open. Weathers with an offensive rebound. Davis backs it out. Too many big bodies. Bandamel for three. No good. Nuttall runs it down. SMU now getting the hustle ball. That's the first time SMU has really been a factor on the glass. Weathers slicing uh, in a 9 nothing run for SMU. When Michael Weathers gets a clean look at the rim, he's awful tough to handle. The lead was once 19, it is now nine. And the crowd here in Dallas starting to cheer louder. Yakimovsky for three, off the mark. Davis, swatted by Abogini. In the second half, they now trail by only seven. The difference is SMU's defense, they really have picked it up. Deshaun Jackson on the bench, but has not returned to the game since getting his bell rung, going for the loose ball. T.J. Bamba in trouble. Another turnover. Weathers again. Davis in the corner, contested three. And Abogidi with a big-time crowded rebound. F.A. has really been the difference inside. Abogidi draws the foul down low, and F.A. will go to the free throw line and shoot two. F.A. is a good offensive player. He's got a quick first step, and he's explosive. He's not mechanical at all, as a lot of young bigs sometimes are. Generally regarded as the best athlete on the floor, Perry, I asked him about, you come from an athletic family. He said, no one in my family is athletic. He said, his parents aren't, his siblings aren't. I said, how do you account for that? He said, I played a lot of soccer, and so it, it, it helped my feet. And he was on the all-freshman team. I mean, he is really a talent. Now they're bringing Marcus Weathers back. Clark did a tremendous job while he was in there. And part of what Coach Jank likes to do is a guy gets a little frustrated, take him out, so he hopes Marcus now has got his composure back and can really help him close this thing out for him. Abergiti free throw finally ends the drought that was 11-0. 
Bandemil reversing, no good. Back to Abogidi. Flowers, no good. Ty Roberts out hustles everybody. Bomber does a great job on that offensive glass. He helped that time deflect it and keep the ball for Washington State. Shot clock down to six. Tyrell Roberts has to do something. Tough shot. Not the possession they wanted, and here comes the Mustang. Weathers inside, no good. Out of bounds, it'll stay with SMU. Nuttall and Vandermeer have to start, step up and make some baskets for SMU. There you see Weathers, he's trying to force the issue. He got a good look that time, he just got to finish those. I think we got a flop call. Yep, flop warning. Issued against Washington State. The lob, no good. Stolen by Bamba. Bamba ahead of Nuttall, lays it in. Those plays kind of take the life out of you. You fought your way back. Instead of you getting a chance to score, you give up a layup on the other end. Could have been down to six and been a two-possession game. Back up to ten now. Davis, no good. Now Ty Roberts with seven on the clock. Ty Roberts for three. Abogidi out jumps everybody and dumps it home. F.A. is a man among boys inside. He is so physically strong and athletic. And Tommy Nunez is going to call a foul. I, I, I'm not... See what he what he is warning here. Because the dunk is good. He's explaining to Kyle Smith. He just he just outworked everybody right there. I mean, I don't know if you call it a delay a game. Or hanging on the rim. Uh, I'm not sure if that or he called it a delay a game. It was called the delay of game. Yeah. A lot of times, bigs get excited and they make the basket, then they smack the ball. And I, I didn't see him smack it away, though. Dave, what I've learned as a coach is what the officials see is not what we see sometimes. <laughs> so uh, you're trying to put logic to this and dealing with the officials sometimes, they have their own. It's really important right now for SMU to keep the momentum. And the way you keep that is by getting good shots and stay with your energy level the way it's been. Weathers slicing in and Michael Weathers makes it single digits again. Now what they did that time, they put Marcus Weathers in the corner so F.A. had to be away from the basket. Flowers in and out. Michael Weathers again ahead of everybody. Two in a row for Michael Weathers. This is the way SMU plays. They like to play in transition. Washington State has gone small. Gay is out, and they're really only playing with one post, which is affecting them defensively a little bit. Abagini, no good. Dennis Rodman's son, DJ, runs it down again. Roberts and Flowers are really trying to control the game right now. 
Flowers for three, no good. Tip by Rodman, no good. Ty Roberts out hustles everybody. Bamba for three, no good. But it's got Xavier to win it all too. So Dickie V, get better. And thanks for watching. And Weathers hanging inside gets an offensive rebound. Second one, no good. And a missed opportunity there as Weathers was in close. He was. Bamba met by a wall and a foul is called. Gay is in the game now as the big, but that time. Great drive by Bamba. He comes in, not only is he a really good defensive player, but his offense has really picked up as the season has progressed. You see him finishing there. It wasn't a lot of contact, but it was enough to draw the foul. Tim Jankovic is saying, look, he went straight up. He went straight up. And, and now Washington is that Jackson's back in, so now they're going big again. And that's, that's the big lineup that gave SMU a lot of trouble earlier. Jackson been out of the game for quite some while after hitting his head, going to the sideline, going into the locker room, and now coming back. Davis stops, spins on Roberts, draws the foul, and Kendrick Davis will go to the free throw line and shoot two. They have not given Kendrick Davis much space. Every shot he's taken today, he's had to earn, and there's been a hand up on him. I love the facial expression <laughs> by Tyrell Roberts, who goes over to the referee and says, look, can, can I ask you a question? That was very good defense. What do you call it? Uh, uh, it? It's funny to see guys politic the referees. Davis averages 19. And he has 18. You talk about Moody Coliseum, 17 and 0 on this floor, tied for third in active streaks, 19 dating to two wins back last year, 38 of 42, and uh, 86 and 17 under Tim Jankovic here. Well, you knew that they were not going to go away nor be intimidated. They beat Memphis twice. They, twice they beat Houston on this floor, so they've been in this situation before. Flowers, deep three, no good. The lead just seven. Batted back around, SMU gets it. Michael Weathers has been hot in the second half, but that one curls out. And Jackson back in the game with another rebound, so he now has nine boards to go with his eight points. SMU has eliminated Washington State's dominance on the offensive glass so far, and that's one of the reasons why they're back in this game. Roberts kicks it out to Flowers for three. He's fouled. And Michael Flowers will shoot three free throws. Washington State does a real good job of creating an empty side, which means they only have, they don't have anybody on the weak one side of the floor, and they're able to drive it, and they can't get much help. And that time, they were able to kick the ball to Flowers, and he got fouled on the closeout. I don't know if there was contact, but I do know this. You do not want to foul a three-point shooter while he's shooting, correct, Coach? And that is absolutely correct, and especially Roberts and Flowers, because both of them are really good foul shooters. Flowers has 14 points so far tonight. Another look at this foul, Coach, or was it? It was a closeout. Uh, he, he hit him on the arm. I, You can't really you can't really argue that too much. That that's normally called a foul. Lead back to double digits, 60 to 50. Weathers to a slicing Agunane who took too many steps. 
again, the size of Washington State is making SMU think and not just normally play the way they normally play with their shot opportunities. Washington State is trying to burn some clock right now, really take their time. Now Jackson tries to lob it into Gay. Gay runs it back down. The three is blocked. Bomba got it back. And a foul underneath. Again, what Washington State is trying to do right now is eat some clock, throw the ball, use their big to throw it into the low post. Either they're going high low or they're going straight into the big in the low post area. Michael Weathers is coming out. He's probably trying to give him a little bit of break before the uh, four-minute timeout. Crowd wanted to walk on Flower. Two on the shot clock. Jackson has to shoot it. Air ball. That time, SMU used their typical defense. Whenever there was a drive, they always wind up putting another guy in the paint. I'm not sure what we have. Here. They're saying the ball got tipped out of bounds, and Washington State has it, but there's only point two on the shot clock. So they're going to have done, to tip this. Yeah, it doesn't allow time to do much. It's not enough time to catch and shoot. Shot clock violation. They, Marcus Weathers has to become a factor in this basketball game. And so far, he has really not been a major factor. Davis, tough pull up, contested, it goes. And Kendrick Davis, the conference player of the year now with 21 points. Every possession right now counts for SMU. Next dead ball will be immediate timeout. Flowers contested, uh. but gets it to go over mm. Bandemel. I'm telling you, our Flowers is really tough with the basketball. He can create space so he can get his shot off in the paint. Davis again. 23. He's been the story in the second half, and he completes the nice three-point play. And so with 3.33 remaining in this game, it is a seven-point spread. I'm not sure if their pressure is going to be able to turn over Robertson Flowers. They've really done a good job of handling the basketball. But it did turn him over, and here comes Davis. Not all thought about it. Davis, tough shot, and draws the foul on Roberts again. And let's see if they give him two or three. As much as the coach, you tell him, stay down, stay down, stay down. They still like to jump at the ball face. That's what makes this game so special. And the worst case scenario for Kyle Smith, because points can go against him while the clock is stuck. Without question. You know that they've coached it. You know he talked about it in the, in the huddle. No foul is the three-point shot. Roberts has four fouls now. He tried to get out of the way. He just, <laughs> he couldn't. It's like seeing candy and you know you're not supposed to take it, but you just can't pass it up. Or for me, it's that Sunday late at night. <laughs> <laughs> Three free throws. I didn't know you were a Sunday man. Who oh, doesn't I, like a hot foot Sunday? Oh, I'm telling yeah. you. Davis has really played very, very well. Second half here. Much better in the second half. Great free throw shooter. Michael Weathers is on his way back in. 
and he makes all three. And coach, a lead that was once 19 points is now just four. And the crowd here at Moody Arena and Moody Coliseum up on their feet. They call it Moody Madness, Magic. Let's see what we get here. Now this is a lot of pressure right now. Rodman draws the foul as he was swarmed by Nuttall and Davis. Yes, uh, you know, they're trying to double the ball. And now Washington State's in the decision. Do we continue to look to attack the basket or do we bring it out and try to burn some clock? And you can't get caught in that never-never land. Hey, Washington State got lucky there. Rodman was in a pickle. He really was. Flowers. And Flowers, so loud now I couldn't hear the whistle no, call. No. They call the foul, and Flowers will go to the free throw line. You can, both coaches are telling their team, play good defense, do not foul. Right now, Washington State will come in with the defensive substitution and bring F.A. back in the game. Flowers has been perfect from the free throw line tonight, five for five. F Flowers is from Detroit, and he's very clever of using his body and jumping in and kind of creating the contact. And that's what Nuttall was trying to explain to the <laughs> official. To no avail, I might say. By the way, Kendrick Davis pretty good at doing the same thing. Without question. Both are good. Lead back to six. Michael Weathers back in the game after a brief rest. It looks like Washington State's in the zone. Weathers inside, passes to his brother, and twin to twin for the dunk. Abogini on the other end, monster dunk and a blocking foul. And he took off from Corpus Christi. <laughs> the athleticism that F.A. has is unbelievable. Oh, uh, man, did he take off from far away. Uh, when he, as soon as he got the ball, I said you kind of get caught in the never-never land whether or not to attack or pull it out. It was no never-never land for him. He got it, and he was going right Ooh. at the basket. In and out on the free throw, a six-point lead. Again, Washington State's in the zone. And while they're in the zone, it makes you use a little bit more clock. Turnover by SMU, costly with only 2.10 left. Both teams, by the way, Coach, will shoot one-on-one -on -one free throws on next fouls on either team. But again, SMU was coming up, set to play against a man. They played against the zone, and Davis turned it over. That was a highlight reel for the NIT for sure. F.A. Abogidi's dunk. But they got bigger issues now, trying to score. Shot clock down to five. Flowers deep. Oh, my God. What a shot. What wow. a big time shot. The Washington State guards are really special. Both Roberts and Flowers. They both are the key to this success of this team. 22 points to dump and pass the ball off. Mustangs desperately need a hoop here. Davis. Got it. Another three for Kendrick. Your Washington State on this possession, Perry. I think they've got to get it in. They got good foul shooters in. Don't throw the ball in the corner because they're going to double it. Saying, you know, after the first trap, you may have to foul. In bumping from the sideline now goes to Rodman, who gets it to Robert. Rodman gets it across. Rodman gets it across, and he is fouled as he crosses half court. Yeah, after the first trap, you have to foul. Because if not, it'll burn too much time. 
You want to use time for your offense, not chasing defensively. Rodman's an 81% foul shooter. DJ has had a great game rebounding, has six rebounds, and clutch from the free throw line. You have to feel like he's in the game because he is a really good foul shooter. You give SMU a lot of credit. They were down 19 in the second half. Without question. I think this crowd picked them up. Coach Jay came up with a different game plan and got them back in the game. Michael Weathers started it. Davis has is, is picked it up. Rodman, two big free throws. Davis already has 30. Out to Bandemel, whose three is no good. Jackson tries to get it. Loose ball on the floor. Ball flies out, and it goes to Washington State. Fifty-seven point five seconds left and an eight-point Cougar lead and they will inbound underneath their own basket They really need a band of mill to knock down that shot again as that he's made so many big shots for SMU through his career Now Bamba fouled in the backcourt by Nuttall One of the things with foul shooting normally once they start if the first one or two guys start to knock them in, it picks up everybody else. If they miss them, it seems like that's contagious and goes the other way. Washington State now has made some stuff that put Jackson and F.A. back in the game for some size defensively to really challenge SMU's ability to get the ball to the rim and rebound. Bob, a five for five from the free throw line tonight. Back in 2011, led by Clay Thompson. Coots. has not been able to kind of get going today because of the size of this Washington State team. But give Washington State a lot of credit. They, they had to make the trip here. They went to Santa Clara. They've had to win on the road. And they've responded in both spots. Davis for three. A monumental comeback by SMU is going to come up short, Coach. It is. It took a lot of energy to come back, but give Washington State a lot of credit. They made big shots when they had to. So Washington State will now travel to Provo, Utah and play the <laughs> BYU Cougars. Not an easy place to play. No, but as well as they're playing, I'm not real sure they care where they're playing because this Washington State team really played very, very well. Kyle did a great job of preparing his team. He did. And, you know, they knew coming in it was going to be speed against size, and the size in the first half was really dominant. Well, I told him I'd give a shout-out to his kids, Bo and Luke, who are watching at home. His son Rocco's here with him. But Bo and Luke didn't make the road trip watching on TV. Proud of their dad tonight because a impressive win in a second-round NIT game on a hostile court.